For decades, this famous stretch of Sydney coastline was the scene of brutal crimes. It was a night out for certain sections of the community to go and bash a few gays after being in the pub. It was a game and it was also a rite of passage. I was first bashed in 1969 when I came out of a gay dance in Petersham. It was a sport. They bashed me, the kid, and when I got up he said, no hard feelings, mate. In the heart of Sydney's gay neighbourhood, activist and historian Gary Wotherspoon can recall a time when gay bashing was commonplace. There were reports of more than 20 incidents a day. The police didn't take any notice. We reported to the police and they didn't want to deal with it. What happened to one of Gary's friends, a fellow university lecturer called Yuri, remains a mystery. In all probability, he was at a beat, uh, Bondi probably, and he ran into one of these gangs and they threw him over the cliff and he drowned and that was the end of Yuri. Among the high-profile disappearances or suspected murders in the 1980s that remain unsolved, 27-year-old Gilles Matani, who was last seen walking along the coast at Tamarama. 24-year-old Ross Warren, whose keys were found at the bottom of cliffs on the same coast. And just months later, 31-year-old John Russell, whose body was found in a similar way. Gay, lesbian and transgender communities are claiming Australia's legal system has failed them. A parliamentary committee found that New South Wales police were indifferent to such crimes and failed to properly investigate them at the time. In response, the Perrottet government is now setting up a judicial inquiry into gay and transgender hate crimes between 1970 and 2010. I think at the end of the day, um, there are people out there who, who want answers to questions, so um, hopefully those questions will be answered, but we look forward to participating in it. John Ages SC represented Scott Johnson's family, who battled for years to have his death properly investigated. A man is now due to face trial and has pleaded not guilty to murder. John Aegis expects the inquiry may lead to new evidence in other cases. It gives people an opportunity who haven't yet reported the crimes committed upon them or committed upon others to their knowledge to come forward. You would have been discouraged from reporting because of your fears that it wouldn't be investigated or that you wouldn't be taken seriously. A commission of inquiry would be a very valuable tool in uncovering what was going on. While New South Wales Police says times have changed along with its practices, the inquiry is expected to lay bare the force's failings in properly investigating crimes. Witnesses are likely to be compelled, meaning that currently serving and former police officers could be called to give evidence. Three decades ago, Alan Rosendale was 32 and had just moved from country Victoria to Sydney. That over there is where I tripped and fell. So. But during a night out, he recalls being chased and bashed by a group of men. I can remember being on the ground having my head bashed by what I thought were planks of wood and, and thinking that that was it, I was going to be dead. No one was going to come and save me. Alan wants the inquiry to investigate whether his attackers were undercover police officers, based on the account of a witness who reported seeing men jumping out of what he believes was an unmarked police car. I would like a little bit of closure if these people who did attack me were the police. Well, I think the Rosendale matter is one matter that cries out for proper investigation. If there were perpetrators who were police officers, then I'm sure that the current commissioner would not oppose their being identified and brought to justice. New South Wales Police told 7.30 that it conducted exhaustive inquiries into Alan Rosendale's case 
could not find evidence linking the witness account to the same assault. The Rosendale case remains open. Former Supreme Court Judge Anthony Wheelie says the inquiry could refer new evidence for further investigation and potentially solve cases. But he warns it must be given broad terms of reference to bring justice for the victims and their families. You'd want this body to have the widest possible powers as close as possible to those of a Royal Commission. I think that if there are serving officers uh, who did uh, turn a blind eye to what was happening or to had any hand in the commission of uh, hate crimes against gay people, uh, I think they should have every reason to fear this inquiry. Um, on the other hand, I think that we can expect uh, other members of the police force in this day and age uh, to be proactive in uh, uncovering those past misdeeds. At the memorial marking gay hate crimes at Tamarama, Gary Wotherspoon hopes the inquiry will find an answer to what happened to his lost friend. Yuri's name comes to mind. I wonder if anything will come up about Yuri's case. So I think it's important that the judicial inquiry does delve deeply into this very dark past. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.